Example 8.3.1. This one's a fairly straightforward calculation, and it's, it's an application of something we've done a lot of times at this point. So instead of writing out the problem, we'll just kind of walk through what's in the text. Because uh, I think that'll just be a little easier to follow than, than having to deal with my handwriting if you don't have to. All right, so the setup for this one is, suppose you are considering buying a share of preferred stock. The stock pays a dividend of $5 per year, with the next dividend due one year from today. Using the capital asset pricing model, you estimate your required return at 10% to compensate you for the risk of the stock's cash flows. What is the maximum price you are willing to pay for a share of the stock? Okay, so there's some terminology in here we, we haven't encountered yet, be worth talking about. This is a, a preferred share of stock, and there, there are two general types of stock. There's common stock and preferred stock. Typically, when you hear people talking about equity or stock, they're talking about common shares. Common shares are the ones that give you an ownership stake. They give you a right to your pro rata share of the firm's future earnings. They allow you to vote on electing the board of directors and some other major decisions the, the firm might make at their shareholders meeting, annual shareholders meeting. Preferred stock is a little bit different. I, sh I should back up and say with common stock, there's no declared dividend until right before it's paid, right? There's, there'll, there'll be some consistency the company would like to maintain. So if they're paying out 10% of their earnings as dividends, they're probably going to try and stick to that unless they have a good reason not to. But the vast majority of, of companies actually don't pay dividends on their common stock. And that's because uh, unless you are a mature company who doesn't have a whole lot of growth prospects, your owners, your shareholders, would mostly like you to retain those earnings so that you can grow the business and earn higher future income rather than paying it out as dividends to shareholders early on when you've got growth opportunities. Uh, okay, so that's common stock. Preferred stock is a little more rare, and if someone is talking about preferred stock, they will generally say that it's preferred stock because not a lot of companies have it. Uh, it tends to come up in kind of special cases or, or tends to be used in special cases, um, sometimes in mergers and acquisitions to, to try and get income split the way they want it, but maintain ownership structure the way the way that they want it, they'll, they'll issue some preferred stock. Um, for regulated utilities will use preferred stock as well, and, and that's because with the share of preferred stock, what you don't get are voting rights. What you do get is a declared dividend. It's It has a lot of similarities, preferred stock has a lot of simi similarities with bonds, and that there'll be a par value declared, usually 100 bucks, and then there'll be a rate attached to it that it's going to pay, so it pays out five percent that means that it's going to pay if it's a has a par value five dollars and it's a five percent preferred share that means it's going to pay five dollars every year now whether they pay that split that up and pay it quarterly or annually you know who knows uh, but it'll be defined similarly to a bond and so if you're going to issue preferred stock you want to be pretty sure that you can make those payments you're, you're not necessarily in default as a company if you don't um, but it is definitely going to be expected from the folks who buy the stock that you are going to be pretty consistently able to make those those dividend payments. And so regulated utilities have their profit margins regulated, and people need, so like power is what we're talking about, a power company is a regulated utility. Um, you're going to sell power. Your profit margin is set by law, um, and you'll pretty consistently sell the same amount of power. So the income stream for something like a regulated power utility tends to be very stable, so they can use preferred stock to raise money, and they can expect to be able to pay those dividends. Most companies have can't really predict their growth prospects or their, or their future earnings prospects all that well. They'll, they'll vary quite wildly from quarter to quarter, year to year. So they're, they would be very cautious in issuing something like preferred stock. They'd rather use common stock if they're going to raise equity that way because they don't have to declare a dividend and, and pay it out. Okay, that took longer than the problem's actually going to take. Let's, uh, let's actually go through this now. Uh, it's, we've got a preferred share of stocks paying a dividend of $5 per year. We estimate our required return at 10%. To compensate you, uh, to compensate us for the risk of the stock's cash flows, that means that we want the stock to return at least 10% in order to pay us for that amount of market risk that it is exposing us to. All right, so we've got a time value money problem. We're going to use our three-step process. We're going to start by drawing the timeline, and so we've got we're just going to map out years in this case because it's paying annually. Our discount rate that we want to apply is 10%. We want to earn at least that. And the stock is going to pay $5 every year with the first one due one year from today. So if we were to buy it for some price today at time period zero, we'd receive a dividend of $5 one year from now. And then another year 
out from that, we'd receive another dividend of five dollars, and another year out from that, we'd receive another dividend of five dollars, and that would just go on into infinity. Typically, preferred stock does not mature like a bond does. It just pays for the life of the company. It pays out the dividend for the life of the company. Okay, so step two, what type of cash flow are we looking at here? Well, we've got a level payment at regular intervals, right? It just stays five dollars. It pays every year, and it goes on forever. So that's a perpetuity, all right? If we recall from our, our cheat sheet that we should be pretty familiar with at this point, if we're dealing with a perpetuity, we really only have one tool with which to evaluate this guy, and that is the present value of perpetuity formula, which is this guy right here. The present value of perpetuity at time t is equal to the cash flow at time t plus one, so one period later, divided by the discount rate. Well, we know the cash flow one year from today, it's $5. We know the discount rate, or we know the interest rate that we want to earn. So if we use that as a discount rate and we plug it in of 10%, we'll take our $5 cash flow divided by 10%, then the present value we are going to get is the present value that would give us a 10% return on that stock. So if we take $5 divided by 0.1, we get a present value of this perpetuity of $50. And so $50 is the maximum price. That's not necessarily the price of the stock. It's the maximum price we would be willing to pay so that we could then earn our expected return or required return of 10%. So we would take this value and look out at the stock's current price. If it's currently trading for $55, then it's too expensive. We wouldn't want to buy it because it would not. we wouldn't expect it to return 10%, which is what we need at a minimum based on the capital asset pricing model. If we looked out at the stock's price and saw that it was trading for $40, well, it's going to generate more than a 10% return, and it would be an attractive buy. It would, it would look cheap to us, and we would want to buy it at that point.